56 years ago, the Apollo spacecraft touched down on the surface of the moon. Shortly afterwards, two humans set foot on Earth's satellite for the first time. They left behind traces that are still visible today. But they left behind much more than a few footprints. A now weathered U.S. flag and a commemorative plaque. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin also left behind scrap metal and trash. Tools, cameras, parts of the landing modules, and even bags of astronaut waste remain largely unchanged in the lunar dust to this day. The landing site has now been redocumented and poses a few puzzles. In 2009, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter took a picture of the landing site where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had become the first humans to set foot on the moon 56 years earlier. The NASA probe flew over the Sea of Tranquility at an altitude of only 24 kilometers and delivered razor-sharp images. After all this time, you can still clearly see the shadow of the descent stage of the Eagle lunar module, which stands silently on the surface of the moon like a relic from another time. Dark tracks run around it. The paths left by Armstrong and Aldrin during their visit are still clearly visible in the gray regolith. The men's footprints will probably still be visible in another 100 years. Unlike on Earth, there is no atmosphere, no wind, and no rain on the moon. Nothing could blur the tracks or weather the objects, at least not in the way we know it. At the moment, no one can say how long the relics of the lunar landing will remain on the surface. Although there is no wind or movement on the moon's surface, the conditions are extreme. Strong UV radiation temperature fluctuations of over 250 degrees Celsius, and extreme cosmic radiation. So it's something of a minor miracle that the relics of the moon landing are still so well preserved after more than 50 years. The Artifacts of the Apollo 11 Mission It's hard to believe what the Apollo 11 mission left behind on the moon. Some artifacts are well known, while others have been kept secret for good reason. The largest object still standing silently in the lunar dust is the descent stage of the Apollo 11 mission. The landing module was named Eagle, and this part later served as the launch platform for the return flight. The landing module is about 4 meters wide and 3 meters high, and was made of nearly indestructible aluminum alloys, titanium, stainless steel, and gold-coated mylar insulation material. These metals will likely survive for millions of years on the moon, where there is virtually no moisture or wind erosion. Around the remains of the landing module, we find a seismometer for measuring moon quakes and a laser reflector that is still used today to measure the exact distance between the Earth and the moon. A TV camera, tools, and sample containers also remain there. The artifacts were used to collect 21.5 kilograms of moon rock and dust. It was the first moon rock to reach Earth. The American flag, which was once proudly planted in the ground, was probably knocked over during the return flight. The flag clearly shows that the lunar climate is not so pleasant after all. The fabric and the less robust materials of the flagpole show clear signs of high temperatures and extreme solar radiation. The symbolic objects placed near the eagle are particularly moving. A small golden olive branch structure was placed on the moon as a sign of peace for humanity. A patch commemorates the ill-fated Apollo 1 crew, and an aluminum disc with messages from 73 nations was intended to bring Earth's culture to the moon 56 years ago. Feces, urine, and trash on the moon? We Earthlings have a trash problem, and we're taking it into space. That sounds kind of funny, but it can have unpleasant consequences. Since the Apollo missions, not only has there been a lot of junk lying around on the moon, but also a very different kind of trash. To save weight for the return flight to lunar orbit, Armstrong and Aldrin had to leave behind bags of urine, feces, and vomit. These relics are not only disgusting, but also pose a danger. The bags contain billions of microbes that were once part of the human body. Whether some of them survived the extreme conditions on the moon remains unclear to this day. Although extreme temperatures, strong UV radiation, and a vacuum prevail there, 
in which microorganisms cannot spread so easily, some germs could still be extremely resistant. If humans were to return to the moon, these explosive bags would be of great interest to astrobiologists. They could provide clues as to how life survives, or even changes, under extreme conditions. It's rather unlikely that germs will break out and colonize the moon. Overall, the moon offers little food, settlement area, and no other organic resources. Nevertheless, we still know too little about the mutability of germs to be sure that we are not severely interfering with alien ecosystems with such traces. Some scientists would like to examine the landing site in detail during another visit to the moon, but this would irretrievably destroy the original heritage. Quite a few researchers are therefore calling the Apollo landing sites to be protected as extraterrestrial cultural heritage and left completely untouched. What happened to the Apollo 11 landing capsule and command module? Did you know that the Apollo 11 spacecraft actually consisted of four enormous parts? One of them was the gigantic Saturn V rocket that launched the Apollo spacecraft into space. The rocket carried the three Apollo modules, the command module Columbia, which housed the astronauts, the service module, which supplied power, oxygen, and propulsion, and the legendary lunar module Eagle, which itself, strictly speaking, also consisted of two parts. Some parts burned up after launch, others crashed onto the moon, and only the tiny Columbia module returned safely to Earth after the mission. The return was nothing short of spectacular. The module had to withstand temperatures of over 2,700 degrees Celsius during re-entry and was equipped with a heat shield made of epoxy resin for this purpose. Three large parachutes slowed the capsule down before it touched down gently in the water. Once in the ocean, the three astronauts had to wait until the recovery crew arrived. The capsule was secured by divers and the astronauts were allowed to exit the capsule clad in biological isolation suits. At that time, it could not be ruled out that the moon might also harbor microorganisms, fungi, or other substances that posed a danger. Today, the Columbia Command Module is the centerpiece of the Apollo 11 exhibition at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., attracting thousands of visitors each year. Three people made history in the capsule, which is only as big as a minivan, and all of the navigation instruments, control panels, and life support systems inside the capsule are still preserved in their original condition. What became of the Apollo 11 astronauts? Neil Armstrong, born on August 5, 1930, in Wapakoneta, Ohio, was the first person to walk on the moon. His career began as a pilot when he was still a teenager. Armstrong later flew in the Korean War. After the war, he studied aerospace engineering and worked as a test pilot. In 1962, he became a NASA astronaut and flew into space in 1966 as commander of Gemini 8. After Apollo 11, he retired from spaceflight as a celebrated hero of the mission and became a professor of aeronautical engineering. Armstrong died on August 25, 2012, at the age of 82. He wanted his ashes to be scattered in the Atlantic Ocean. Buzz Aldrin's full name is actually Edwin Eugene Aldrin Jr., and he was born on January 20, 1930, in Montclair, New Jersey. He was the pilot of the lunar module Eagle and the second man on the moon. Aldrin underwent classic military training, attending the best academies in the U.S., and later earned a doctorate in space mechanics. In 1966, he flew Gemini 12, one of the pre-missions for the Apollo flights. After the moon landing, Aldrin struggled with his fame, depression, and alcoholism. He became a kind of superstar who was constantly campaigning for the further development of space travel, gave numerous interviews, and enjoyed a colorful social life. Aldrin is still alive, turned 95 in 2025, and still appears regularly in the media where he promotes manned missions to Mars. Michael Collins was the pilot of the command module Columbia and was born in Rome on October 31, 1930. Collins was a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy and flew one of the first space flights ever in 1966 with Gemini 10. While Armstrong and Aldrin were on the moon, Collins remained alone in orbit, 
a role that earned him the nickname The Loneliest Man. After Apollo 11, he left NASA, wrote an emotional book about his experiences on the far side of the moon, and became director of the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Collins died on April 28, 2021, at the age of 90. The Landing Sites of Apollo 12 to 17 Apollo missions landed on the moon a total of six times, leaving behind far more relics. The landing sites of Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 are several hundred to thousand kilometers apart, and each mission had a specific goal. Apollo 12 landed in November 1969 in Oceanus Procellura, near the site where the unmanned Surveyor 3 probe landed on the moon. The astronauts on the mission explored the lunar environment and, like their predecessors, collected geological samples. Among other things, a color television set was left behind during this visit, which was unfortunately damaged during the landing. Apollo 14 arrived in the Fra Mora Highlands in February 1971, where Apollo 13, which had crashed on its approach to the moon, was originally supposed to land. The crew examined crater structures and collected rocks, which were another important piece of the puzzle in reconstructing the history of the moon. This mission also left behind all kinds of trash, scientific instruments, and personal items. The destination of Apollo 15 in July 1971 was the Hadley Rills region, and it was the first mission to use a lunar rover. The astronauts traveled over 27 kilometers in the futuristic vehicle, discovering, among other things, the famous Genesis rock, a particularly old moon rock, and leaving the lunar roving vehicle and other equipment behind on the moon. Apollo 16 landed in the Descartes Highlands in April 1972. The goal was to study volcanic activity. The mission again yielded a wealth of new insights into the geological diversity of the moon. And these astronauts also tested a lunar rover, which was then left behind. Apollo 17 was ultimately the last moon landing. In December 1972, the crew landed in the Taurus Littrow Valley. On board was geologist Harrison Schmidt, who was the first scientist to set foot on the moon. The mission was particularly productive in terms of samples and measurement data. And here too, a lunar rover and equipment were left behind, along with a number of small items. Click on subscribe now and be there for every new video.